So if you're wondering whether to watch this discussion for the next 15 or 20 minutes, uh, let me give you an idea about the kind of audience for whom I intend to make this discussion. So this is a discussion on choosing history as your choice for optional subject for civil service exam preparation. And I have three different set of audience to whom I intend to target this discussion. First, freshers, complete beginners to civil service exam preparation and uh, who have already made up their mind that their choice of option is going to be history. Second, again, freshers, but who are totally undecided on the choice of optional because you cannot simply make up your mind. Since UPSC gives you a long list of optionals and you find every optional to be enticing, you may be under a dilemma as to which optional you should be choosing for this exam. And thirdly, are the set of aspirants who already have completed your PCM course and you might even have attended your optional classes for a different optional for the last one or two years, but still you're not confident about the optional. You feel there are just so many aspects of the optional, which of particular optional subject that uh, you're not clear about and something is preventing you from developing an interest about that subject as well. If that's the case, do not linger on, do not continue with an optional that's not working well for you. Don't even hesitate to shift to an altogether new optional. It's because I also fit into this third category. Because history was never my first choice of optional subject, but uh, it was two different subjects. I first tried one, then it did not work out, tried another optional, even that did not work out. And finally, I, I ended up with history and I think it was the best decision I could have made with respect to preparing for civil service examination. Because I should actually credit the, the role of history in pushing me into the rank list in my first attempt, pushing me into IAS in the second attempt. So history plays a very, very significant role either in civil service examination or in any other exams, any other competitive exams, state exams, government exams that you give, there is no escape from history. Because history has a lot of role, a relevance to play in both prelims as well as in main stages of every different examination, right? So it has this added benefit that the time that you spend mastering optional can also be, uh, it can be utilized for uh, getting really high scores in history questions in prelims as well. While other optional subject students probably will get around 30 to 40 percent questions in prelims correct. Just because you happen to study a lot because of your optional preparation, you will be able to secure at least 70% of the questions right in history in prelims, right. So it is for these three set of aspirants for whom I, um, I would like to clarify about what I have to offer for history in the course of the next one year. Uh, I would say that uh, since I have experience of uh, clearing with this exam with history two times, I'll tell you the only reason that you should have in your mind for choosing history as your optional is simply because history is very, very interesting. Uh, do not listen to the advice which says that history is a scoring subject. Do not listen to the advice which says that history is a predictable subject. Yes, all these are true, but just because you have those factors doesn't mean history will be apt for you. The only reason history is going to be apt for you is because history simply, it just pulls you into the subject and uh, there's a popular saying about history. History can either put you to sleep or it can keep you sleepless in the nights, right? So I believe if taught correctly, if the correct historical input is provided to you in the right narrative style, I believe that history fits into the second category. It can simply keep you awake in the night with wonder, with excitement. You cannot simply let go of the book that you're reading. You just want to read page after page and you'd make attempts to complete the entire textbook. So I believe the entire role of a faculty is simply to nudge this, to create this interest in every aspirant. And if that can be done, I'm sure history is going to be a winning formula for every aspirant, right? There are no imaginary theories, there are no concepts and abstractions like many other humanity subjects. You don't have to imagine anything. Everything is factual. Everything is black and white. That's the beauty of history. It's a fact-oriented subject. There are no ambiguities in this. So, and this is the oldest discipline that is ever known to mankind and because of which a lot of good literature exists, right? Unlike many other optional subjects, there are a few optional subjects for which you really cannot come up with the very great reading resources at all because the subject is a novel discipline. It could have only come up in the last 100, 200 years, right? In fact, most of the humanities subjects, they have their origin post-industrialization, correct? But history is not like that. You have historical sources even 3,000 years back, 5,000 years back. And so that's really what makes it easier and interesting to read history. And you will never for a minute feel handicapped for want of sources. So it is, it is, uh, so what I speak to you now, it's, uh, it's the accumulation of all my personal experience over the last 15 years, 
since I first started touching my first history book in 2010. So that was the year when I first took up a history book, started reading and since then there's no turning back. So for the last 15 years I've been uh, reading quite a huge number of corpus of literature for history and uh, it is with that I can say for every single word in your history syllabus sheet there is always some standard source written by some great historian which you can always refer. So that's what makes history without any ambiguity and this is a very very compelling reason why you should be choosing history. The sources are certain and the subject can turn out to become very interesting. Right, and uh, the reason why I place the interest in the subject as the foremost reason for choosing a sub an optional is because you are going to spend the next one or two years of your preparation every day, four to five hours, simply reading optional subject, no matter what optional subject you choose. Right, you may be uh, tricked into believing that a particular optional subject has a very small syllabus sheet, so there are very less books to read. No, there are always aspirants who tend to read extensively for any particular optional subject. And there is no subject which can be mastered for your optional purpose within six months or eight months or ten months. I, I am very certain it's going to take you the next one full year or even one and a half years to master any particular optional subject so as to get into some rank in the rank list. So it is with all these ideas in my mind. So that's why I have designed a course which can handhold you for the next one year. So my program that I intend to launch is a course on history optional which I have called it as, as history plus. And what's the reason behind why I call it as a plus? You will be clarified on it as I walk you through the upcoming slides. So this is a program which is going to last for the next one year until your prelims 2025. It's a 10 month course and it's going to have 150 sessions altogether. It's because I believe I require 150 sessions to transmit all the content about every single word of your optional syllabus sheet and also to develop your writing skills, your analytical skills, and your independence and self-reliance on taking a book and reading it yourself. Because I believe every single topper in history, including myself, all of us, we have read from the books ourselves. And year after year, I, I feel those who are not able to make it to the rank list, if they go down very badly with history as their optional, it's simply because they were the ones who looked for shortcuts. They found XYZ market materials and they just started it, reading it without giving a thought if toppers actually read from these kind of sources or not, right? There are very good books. There are very standard books written by various historians, which uh, will be a part of this curriculum. So that's why I believe it is going to take at least 150 sessions to completely cover all aspects of history. And uh, to cover one, 150 sessions, it's going to take at least the next 10 months at least, right? So this is a brief description about myself. And... Um, I have cracked this examination twice with history as my optional subject and uh, it's with my understanding of what makes any aspirant crack this examination. I have designed the structure of this entire course spanning over 150 sessions. So let me first give you a brief idea of what I believe as the set of factors that helps any aspirant crack this exam. So firstly, you, are, you, you have to understand that anybody who clears prelims, they are going to be quite decent with their content, right? Because without content, there's no way you can even crack prelims in the first place. So if that's the case, then what's going to be the great differentiating factor between the 15,000 aspirants who appear in, in the mains? I would say it's all about the skills. It's a skill of effective reading. It's a skill of writing. And it's a skill of managing a question, even though you may be short of knowledge and content. Because at least 20 to 30 percent of the questions in every GS paper and every paper of your optional, you will at least not be aware of exact answer for 20 to 30 percent of the questions. It's because that's the nature of UPSC. That's the challenging nature of civil service examination. You cannot say it's only when I'm very certain that I have 100 percent correct answer for every question, only then I'll even be making an attempt. Because that is an ideal state and you can never reach that ideal state. So that's why there will be a lot of questions which you are very average with content, but still you'll have to make up and you'll have to manage such kind of questions, right? So it's the intersection of these two, which is going to be the winning formula to crack even general studies as well as the optional paper, right? And if there are 15,000 aspirants who are going to appear in mains, trust me, not even 5,000 to 6,000 will have both these skills intact. Right? Because of variety of reasons, a lot of aspirants do not focus and do not give adequate importance on sharpening their writing skills. They are completely weak in terms of expression, articulation. 
right? It's because all their obsession throughout the last one or two years of their preparation has been always to equip them with knowledge and content. Somehow they should be able to make through prelims. So they have been solving a lot of objective questions without giving due focus to what all activities on a daily basis would have strengthened your writing and expression, right? So I believe even if you are a bit low on the content, let's say you are not very good with knowledge, you only have the next one year to prepare for history optional and you feel that you are a slow reader and you may not be able to read adequate amount of history, I would still say you can still clear this examination if your skills are intact. So that's why my philosophy is translated into the design of this course. So that's why I have 150 sessions planned for all of you who enroll in this program. And the 150 sessions have two components, 100 sessions which are going to address the content part, 50 sessions which are going to address the skills part. And one without the other is not going to be a winning formula. So that's why I wouldn't want to give only the skills, I, I wouldn't want to give only the content in the 100 lectures. No, it's going to be a mix of both so that in the next one year you become confident enough, in the next one year you become capable enough to face your prelims history questions as well as your uh, mains optional as well as general studies part of history, right? So in the 100 sessions which I'll be taking, I'll be addressing the four different parts of your history optional syllabus sheet. You have four parts, ancient, medieval, modern India and followed by world history. So I'll be devoting around 25 sessions for each part so that with 100 sessions, every single word in the syllabus sheet can be ticked off, right? So you should actually feel that you have something, something substantial in the form of your class notes, in the form of your class lectures, which has actually simplified every aspect of your syllabus sheet. This is number one. But simply attending lecture is not going to help you become self-confident. That's why there will be a lot of assignments that will be given to you. And uh, what are these assignments? These are the assignments which is going to take you to standard textbooks. There are standard books written by Bipin Chandra for modern India, Shekhar Bandopadhyaya for modern India, A.L. Basham for ancient India, Upinder Singh for ancient India. So you wouldn't have to read entire book completely, but there are select portions of the book which I'll be giving in the form of assignments. So by making you make this assignment, I'll at least ensure you go and touch those books once. You try to understand what's there in the book because it's the complete ignorance of great content in these books which makes aspirants feel helpless after one or two years of preparation. They would simply be confining their preparation only to class, class notes. And some aspirants wouldn't even read class notes. They'll just go and buy random XYZ material in the market, simply read this, assuming that they are good with history. But understand always the cream of optional pre preparation aspirants. They are the ones who would have definitely read multiple good textbooks for their preparation. And there are so many reasons why you should be reading from the best of the textbooks, which I'll be explaining in the introductory lecture, which I'll be handling on the July 24th, right? In that lecture, I'll be clarifying to every different aspect of history optional preparation. So to keep the session brief, I would tell you, 100 sessions addresses the content and the knowledge part. And these 50 sessions, helps in three different ways. First is by making you assignments and by evaluating your assignments by going through the notes that you have made. I am going to direct your preparation in the right course of, uh, course of direction, right? So I'm going to ensure that whatever you make as notes becomes exam worthy. I'm going to ensure that your notes are made in such a way that you learn how to utilize them in bringing it in some part of your answers that you write, correct? So that's going to be followed up. And the last 20 sessions that I'll be handling just one or two months before your prelims are completely to ensure your optional preparation is channelized to grad prelims, right? Because you have read at least five to six books for your optional preparation, five good books. And there are just hundreds of facts inside all these books. Why can't we just give a finishing touch to that preparation, right? Why can you um, not capitalize on that so that what other general studies aspirants who have some other optionals, they wouldn't be aware of all these facts, but you are aware just because you have read all these books. So we'll give a finishing touch to your preparation so that you get all the factual questions that comes in your prelims also correct. So this is the smartest thing that you can actually do in your civil service preparation. And I would say this is the reason which uh, made it speedier my chances of uh, cracking this examination. Because what I prepare extensively also is used to score at least 20 to 25 marks in my prelims, correct? So that will be taken care in the last 20 sessions, which I'll be handling just before your prelims examination. And the 20 sessions in the middle, which are to enhance your articulation skills, are to be undertaken with the help of Hindu newspapers, right? And I believe 
every successful aspirant in this examination would have read at least one newspaper for sure completely and these days a very competitive toppers who make it to the top 50 ranks at least whenever i meet them for the personality test sessions right when they come for mock interview when i have a discussion with them i'm able to clearly understand they have started going beyond one newspaper so all these successful toppers spend time reading at least the editorial part of the second newspaper and I believe as an optional faculty, I should also ensure your skills for your general studies papers are also built intact. And, it, and uh, the writing skill that gets built because of the assignments that I give you from Hindu newspaper is not only going to help you in writing impressive answers in your general studies, it is also going to help you with writing very good answers to give good structure to your answers, even when you write your history optional answers as well. The writing skill is going to be interconnected between your general studies and optional paper. It's the same skill. If you can write well, you write the same structure of answers. You give interesting headings. You give a very catchy introduction and you give a very closing conclusion. So all these are uh, same set of skills that needs to be developed from Hindu newspaper as well as from the assignments that I'm going to give you. And it's from these 20 sessions, you are going to build your competency with effect to writing. And uh, we have another 10 more sessions which are conducted after every test. So it is in these 10 sessions, I'll help you understand how better your answers could have been written by making a comparison with the top performers. So let's say your friends write the same test and if they bring in some interesting aspect which you are un which, are, which were unknown to you, I'll be pointing it out in the form of uh, cross-learning sessions. So it'll all be connected online and I'll walk you through showing the best aspects of a particular answer and why I have given rewarded marks higher than for what I have rewarded for others. And not only that, it is in these sessions, I'll be hand-holding you through toppers answer sheets. You need to know how to first look at toppers answer sheets. You know, you need to know first, what do you have to learn from toppers answer sheets? Because a lot of aspirants, they mindlessly start noting down all the points that are there in toppers answers. That's not going to help you at all. But instead learn what could have been the source from which the topper would have learned all these points, right? Instead learn, how is this topper's answer different from some other topper's answer, right? It is to help you gain such an experience. We have this 10 comparative learning sessions. So I believe it is in these 50 sessions, you get the necessary tools with which you are able to present your content, right? So that's why I believe we, we do require 150 sessions over the span of next 10 months to transmit all the knowledge that I have about history and cracking history and utilizing history for your prelims. So all of that is going to be packaged in the form of these 100, uh, sorry, 150 sessions. So if in case you are interested to enroll in the History Plus optional program, uh, let me help you understand how you can do that. Uh, in the description box below, I have attached a Google form. Please fill in the Google form with all your particulars and uh, I'll be reaching out to you. I'll be giving you the brochure, entire detailed brochure of this particular course. And also I'll be sharing you the link of the first introductory session, which I'll be holding on July 24th. It's a Wednesday uh, during the time of 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. It's a two-hour session. But actually the courses will be conducted on the weekends. It's going to be a weekend course on Saturday and Sunday from afternoon 2.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. It's five-hour course on Saturday as well as five hours on Sundays. So all you need to do is just spend 10 hours every weekend, every weekend. Right? So that the next five days you have time to complete reading, to complete all the assignments that, that are given to you and to come confident for the next lecture. Right. So the medium in which the course will be handled is going to be exclusively English. Uh, as a closing remark, what I would like to say is you just have to trust the faculty, you have to trust the process which is suggested. Just place your trust. In the initial days, it may be a slow pickup that you will be experiencing. Not Mountains cannot be moved in the beginning, first month or second month. But it's like a slow layer after layer of gradual building which takes place. So that at the end of 10th month, you feel in every aspect of this examination, wherever you face history, you are the best in it. Right. So that's it. That's it about um, uh, giving a, an, an introductory idea about what this History Plus program is all about.